we are going now to talk about shared memory. In particular, how to implement a shared memory in an asynchronous distributed system. So we have an asynchronous distributed system, it's a message passing system, and we are going to implement or simulate a shared memory in such a system. So from the user point of view, our goal is just to give the user the illusion of a shared store, for example, a key value store. So um, let us look to real uh, shared memory. What is uh, a formal model of a shared memory? So we don't have a message passing system, so it's uh, no output buffer, uh, no input buffers. Instead, nodes access a shared store and perform operation on this store. The store consists of a number of memory cells. We call them registers in, in this lecture. And these models, uh, multi-processor systems with uh, shared memory or multi-core with shared memory. And we are interested in distributed system, so we are interested in simulating shared memory using message passing. We will also assume in this case that we have a fixed number of nodes. These nodes communicate only by messages, but we are going to implement an abstraction of a shared memory using message passing. So we have a distributed system. The system is asynchronous system, and we want to give the illusion of a shared store. That's what we call by uh, simulating a shared memory on a distributed system. And our objects, in this shared store, we will call them registers. So a register or object represent each memory location. And the only operation we allow are reading a register or writing a register. So it's called read-write registers. There are possibility of having other type of um, register abstractions. Not only read-write register, we can think of FIFO queues, read, modify, write operations, test and sets, which in this lecture we are not going to cover. We are just talking about a shared store that have a bunch of registers and the nodes, the only thing the nodes can do is to read the value of a register or write a value of a register. So what is exactly a read-write register? So a read-write register has two operations. A read operation, this is the register, if you read the operation, you expect that you will get the value stored in this register. So the value of R is read to be X. And the write operation, which given the register, you are basically writing the value X in this register. So after the operation completes, the value of this register is X. Sometimes in this lecture, we omit the register. In general, we assume that we have actually uh, an array of registers, but we will do our specification with respect to one register. We will discuss the issue if we do an implementation for read-write register with respect to one register, uh, this is enough to implement the shared memory for multiple registers. And in our case, it will be enough. So let's look now from the point of view of a distributed uh, system. So we have a bunch of nodes and to perform an operation like read or write, you start with an event here called an invocation. So here is an invocation of a write operation and here is an invocation of a read operation. For each invocation, there will be later on a corresponding response or a completion of the operation. In the case of write, this event will signify the completion of the write operation, whereas in the case of read, this response event will return the value of the read of that register. So we will have some basic assumptions. The first assumption we have is nodes are sequential. So if you look to a node, a node P0, so operation will start by an invoke, invoke event and continues until a response 
event and this node cannot do any other operation until it got the response of this operation. After that, we'll have another invoke later on followed by a response event which signifies the completion of the operation. So, from a node point of view, we will see events in the form invocation followed by response, invocation followed by response. I.e., basically, we do one operation at a time. So we'll have some also very simplifying assumptions on register values, but it could, the register values could be anything. We have to have some initial value. We arbitrarily choose zero, but it could be another undefined value. And uh, whatever the values of these register positive or integers, but it could be anything. Let's, look, let's now look to some definitions. So we say that in an execution, an operation is complete if both the invocation and the response events occurred on that process. And we also say that an operation is failed if invoked but no response. It means if we have a process PI, here we do an invoke events and there is no response event, it means that PI actually failed somehow. Another um, definition is because operations have a stretch, this is a time between an invoke and um, a response, then we have really to define what it means for an operation to precede another operation. So operations does not happen in a single point of time, it has a stretch. Uh, so we say that there is an operation op sub 1 precedes op sub 2 if the response of op1 precedes the invocation of op2. Uh, now, um, it's interesting to see this, to understand this issue. It's very clear what it means for a response event here, for example, on that process, to precede an invoke event on the same process. But this is not only what we mean. We mean also even if we have multiple processes, like PJ here, we can think of a global clock outside the system, and this global clock decides what it means for an event to precede another event. So, if an invoke events happen here, this is an invoke, then definitely this invoke event is after this response event. Therefore, if we start an operation here, so we call this operation OP1, and this is OP2, then in fact OP1 precedes OP2 even if these two operations happen in two different processes. Now, the other definition we have is concurrency between operations. The idea is simple. If two operations, if the stretch of two operations overlap, then the operations are considered concurrent. So in this case, if neither one operation precedes the other, then the two operations are concurrent. We will also talk about terminology of what type of algorithm we are going to deal with. In the issue of read-write uh, shared memory, we are going to discuss algorithm, two types of algorithm. The first type of algorithm we call a one-in algorithm, which it's an algorithm that implements shared memory where each memory, uh, each register, have a designated writer. Okay, so there is a designated writer and one designated writer and multiple uh, readers, basically. The other class of algorithm we are going to do is to generalize the single writer, multiple reader, to multiple writers, multiple reader. It means a register now, or registers in general, can be written concurrently by multiple uh, writers, and still we have multiple readers. So let's start with a very simple intuitive definition that makes sense if we have a single writer. First of all, the termination is easy, so this is our, our properties of something that we call a regular register very simple type of register, which basically each read and write operation of a correct node completes. So if the node is correct, so we expect that 
whenever it invokes an operation, it will always get a response. This is, we want our algorithm to satisfy these properties. So this is a form of liveness uh, property. The other property we're talking about is validity, which actually a safety property that says if a node performs a read, then the read returns the last value written. And in this case, last is defined if the read is not concurrent with the write and not concurrent with a failed write. Now, what is a failed write? It's a, if we have a process, a writer, we call it PI. Here is a time span. This writer in, invokes a write operation and fails. So we can at this time consider that the write operation is continuing say uh, forever so if a read does not overlap with a failed write or a concurrent write we return the last value read not the value before the last value this is the only constraint we have here otherwise the read might return the overlapping or concurrent value of the write or the last value of it let us have an example so here is an here is um, p1 invoke a write and here is the response, okay? He wants to write uh, value five. Initially, the value of the register is zero, and we have three nodes. P3 invokes a read operation and completes the read operation here. Observe that this read operation is overlapping with the write operation, but the value returned is zero, okay? That is fine, because it can return the last value written. It does not need to return the overlapping value. P2, on the other hand, returns the value of 5, which is legal value to return, because a read operation can return the value over of the overlapping right. And then after that, still this read is overlapping, this read is overlapping with this right, but according to the regular register specification, it can return either this value or the last value written, and in this case it returned the last value written. Here is definitely a situation where we have a read that is coming after the completion of the write. So this read is after this write. This write precedes this read. It has to return the value 5. This read is after this write, has to return the value 5. So this execution satisfies the regular register specification. But what we can observe by this very simple current definition of register is the following. This is regular, yes but does not really give us a single storage illusion. In a single storage, you cannot return the read equal to zero after a read returned the value of five. But we start with this simple definition of a regular register.